So I was hoping that we could, or you could, agree what you want that to consist of and how far you want this remit to go for me to take it away from you. So for example, yeah. with some of them, with so with a lot of the ones that you find online, if you want to volunteer on council on council land, you have to write in, you have to get written permission, you have to sign in, you have to do all sorts of quite stringent things, which I didn't want to bring up today. So it's it's really a case of how do we want those documents to be put together? I think we need to encourage people groups to, to volunteer, volunteer and, yeah. and, and do good, but it's got to be in liaison with the council and so that there's no yeah. working across purposes and it's all got, also got to be covered with insurance. I'm going to try and make a suggestion that clubs, groups, organisations that either currently use our land, volunteer and work on our land, or we think are likely to, mm -hmm. we make some effort to engage with and maybe have like an open informal meeting where we discuss this with them to gauge what our expectations might possibly be and also how we can have something in place that's not so restrictive that it handicaps them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But and get a lot like, general understanding that there needs to be some sort of procedure protocol in place or written agreement in place, insurance is provided or risk assessments so that the council is safeguarded while not wanting to hinder them. Is that a sensible suggestion? Would we need to go to that meeting with some ideas in our mind? I, I think it's really helpful. Put a few ideas down now. I think it's But for well. items for discussion rather than this is what we want. I, I think that's... Um... I think it's a good suggestion, you know, I've had the clerk as well, but leave the space to have a talk about this because, you know, we certainly don't want a restrictive um, no. uh, document in place that binds us and then declares all of our community groups from everyone who want to work with us. Um, at the same time, we want to mitigate any risks and make sure there's clear lines and structure in place to, to do things and to coordinate. I, I fully support the chair's idea of uh, going to community groups that we were already working with, particularly or maybe working with, and just gauging the sense of that. But also, like Sue said, um, we do need to take some there to, to start the ball. Mm. There, there the might be some, good. sorry, forgive me, there might be some things to us that are non negotiable. Yeah. And I think we need to make those clear. So, you things, know, I'm, not, I'm throwing this out. This I, think, jackets or, or, I think one of the things, the reason why this put together is that. Uh, it's about liability. Mm. The number one priority for us is mitigating liability. You know, when they're operating on a council property, there needs to be the appropriate insurances, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. and, and processes in place so that the council doesn't become liable for other people's actions on our properties. That's the number one thing, I mm -hmm. think, that goes on to having a discussion about. The other part is coordination. So we're aware of what's happening. On the land um, doesn't have to have it minuted down you know you will come onto this site at 20 past eight in the morning and be off by this time but something on there that we're aware of the activities and if there's anything significantly going to change um, i know like the bloomers do a lot of work but if they decide you know what we're going to put a tree here <laughs> we're going to do that 
that those sort of things are coordinated with the council so they can take a view on things. So it just covers the large relevance of things whilst allowing the land available for community groups to utilize. So those are the sort of things on my agenda anyway. Is quite Do we have a list of um, the groups that we would like to liaise with? Do, do you have particular ideas? Sorry, I'm <laughs> no, no, no. totally different. Um, yeah. on. There isn't so much at the moment, but there is going to be when we're talking about planting poppies at Deep and Common yeah. and Rose Crop School parents really want to work with us and we tension the Jubilee Wood. So we're doing it now before we get all these groups that are going to want to be held in us. Um, from my perspective, from a, from a more kind of safeguarding and legal perspective, um, I wouldn't really want to have to go down the lines that other councils do, where people have to come and sign in if they're doing things and all of that kind of thing. But perhaps there could be a situation where we have a general agreement. So, for example, if you're the bloomers and you've got five people that are part of your bloomers, then if we know that there's those five people that are working on council land, if there's an accident, we can say, yes, we know that person is part of that group and therefore they're covered our, under our insurance. If then someone new comes along, we might need to add them. And the same with what days they're on there. So if you could tell we will be on there at the weekend, then we can say, we've got work going on this weekend. And it, it, I don't really think from a legal perspective, we need more than that. We need to know who we've got and when they're there. And to be honest, anything more is sort of micromanaging, I think. And oh, just moving on from that slightly. Would it be beneficial to have a point of contact with the group rather than saying we need to know there's five people? Do we need to know there's somebody who's responsible for those five people within sort of a team leader, as it were? That might be we can have a point of contact, but I think for them to be insured, we're supposed to know who they are. Right. But it depends on that. the group that's their own insurance. Yeah, they have yeah. yeah. it up to 10 million for, um, sure it's 10 million for any. Accidents like yeah. that or injury and that public liability, then for talks of equipment and they can be shared with them. Well, let me check with my jury. I think the contents of the show is about how some things are ridiculous. Look at that. They say they, if you've got your own, it's different. And then, but the, the chances are that some of the other groups. Especially the department won't have their own insurance, so maybe that's that makes it slightly different. The other, the other thing to consider is what happens if one of those groups causes some damage to council property, mm. haven't they? Yeah. Those are the electric lines. Big or, yeah. or, 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 or water pipe, who's responsible for that? That needs to be laid down. Which is one of the liabilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The material yeah. damage. Just, you know, we're working on the electric and the water lines, it's scaring up the things. Improving facilities really does help. Would, um, I mean, we're obviously looking at policy for working on council land. I'm actually thinking a bit like the um, hire agreements. Would it be better to have an agreement, a volunteer agreement, rather than that? And of course, a policy, maybe. I think that's probably a better idea because then. Uh, Where they, so it's a, a, a written agreement between. The council mm. and whatever club group organisation. Mm. If if it's not if there's an issue, for instance, like that, yeah, um, who would then be responsible? Whether yeah. or not they have their own insurance, whose insurance they're relying on, who would, like those sort of things. And you can have a policy written into that agreement, can't you? That's that standard policy. And then when you have an agreement between two parties, it's on those terms. Yeah. I think it's right. the, the office that's probably easy to manage actually. Oh, yeah, that's like a yeah. agreement. Yeah. You, you yeah. hire access to the land and yeah. to do whatever you need to do and subject to sticking to those those, those agreed rules and find it on with it as soon as you overstep the mark. Yeah. It gets looked at again. And you can put in there then things from a liability perspective. Mm. If you know, if you step outside this room and you get injured, then you do so at your own risk because that's yeah, what yeah. they would yeah. you to do and that kind of thing. And then it's in writing this one, yeah. which I think is one of the things. It's a standard know. document and it goes to everybody, yeah. whoever they are. Yeah. Shall I do something like that then? And then we can circulate it to groups and get the and get back, feedback on it. Yeah. I think yeah. that's really good. Mm. Okay. Feedback to us first. Yeah. And then, and then yeah. 
common yeah. obviously making it clear that this is not a criticism of them it's something that we are having to do yeah to cover our yeah so you say Oh, yeah, I agree with Andy. If, if something could be drafted, circulated to committee yeah. members mm. for comment, or even full council because they meet more often than us. And also, if there was any disaster, <laughs> touch with the LC, it wouldn't be. If there was, it wouldn't be in the whole council. It was not. It was there. <laughs> um, yeah, it's open comment and then circulate to community groups. So if I circulate it around this committee, and you're happy by email, we'll look at it to full council. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Yeah, to then, to then consult the community groups. Yeah. <laughs> Michelle, would you like that as a proposal? Yes, or please, you... if that's all right. Do we have a proposal second? I'll do it. Um, Andy sure, and Michelle Perrins. That was unanimous. Okay, moving on. Item seven, we've got the front awarding policy. Do we have any comments on the open meetings? I read through the suggestions on this part of it. I didn't really have a particular issue with it. Mm. Okay, I have a couple of comments. Because I thought it would be a good idea to um, just gauge on this with some of the people that might be likely to apply for grants. Or that I know are looking to apply for grants, like the box of happy position of interest. And actually, a couple of things that come up were in the um, so for um, the scope of the grants, I think this suggestion was, was including something to cover fixed costs like rents as well, was one thing. And also signatories. So if someone's receiving a grant, Normally, there's obviously some sort of um, like funding agreement or something in place, and signatories, and whether or not actually, like I know I've recently, as a bloomer, just swapping hats quickly, I've applied for a, a, a grant by a threatening council, and two of the bloomers had to sign the funding agreement, and on that, you can't be related. So it has to be two members that aren't related. So I don't know if that's something that we wanted to. Um, yeah, would that one just, where was that going? Uh, well, this this was feedback that I've received. Yeah, so well, this is the most common Yeah, But, so you know, make, making sure, like, it just is like, again, it's just mitigating, like, I mean, that yeah, any fine. accusations or that could be, could be made. And also, if somebody leaves, potentially, might yeah, be so you could, on there. So, Again, for instance, I know with the prisons like me, Joe and Elliot are obviously both mm -hmm. committee members, but they're related. So, for instance, would we hand over money with two signatories that are related, or would we say, well, actually, hold on, we would like signatories to be two of, like, just to make sure that there's, like, so I think it looks a bit more impartial. Yeah. I don't know. It was just a suggestion that was made. Um, it's scrutiny, isn't it? It does. A, this is quite many for us. Mm. So, and then something else. Um, obviously, but I don't know if this was for the priorities or again priorities. Maybe I'm not sure. But other things that come up were inclusivity. So making sure that it was like if it was something that benefited someone of all ages or all genders or like. Yeah, all nationalities, um, things that also tackled anti-social behaviour and crime prevention, um, things that promoted health or well-being, whether that's physical or, or mental, being sustainable, being educational, like these are all things as well that I think should take priority. I thought they were really good suggestions. Sorry, could you just repeat this? I've got social behaviour, inclusivity. Um, Health and well-being, education, tackling isolation, that was one. Um, and and you just said sustainability, so things to say it's sustainable. I don't think that was the so well, basically what you're doing is where it says vulnerable so people, you're expanding just, just doing like do you mean some like some wider scale for things that we actually prioritize, like things that we think are valuable assets to the community. And at the beginning of this, the third line it says provision of services to vulnerable people, just to be yeah. honest. 
not he. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did well, say I did don't say it was the We don't want to be sexist, so that would be a plus. Similarly to before, like obviously this is a draft at the moment, it'll be reworked and then it would be going back to the normal council. But again, I did wonder if we should maybe approach people that have put in grants recently, so maybe in the last 12 months, 24 months, and say to them, what do you think? Is this workable? Do you think, because again, going back to the point that I've recently filled in a grant application, I know you have as well, on that grant application, all you literally had to do was fill in what it was that you, the project that you were undertaking, how that met the objectives. So for us, that might be obviously, you know, combating loneliness, isolation, mm -hmm. supporting the vulnerable, preventing crime, anti social. They could be our objective. How are they, how, how is that met? And then they would have to explain. And, and that was literally it, along with obviously who you are, contact details, all the rest of it. It was as easy and straightforward as that. And I think in the past, when I've applied for one, I've had to send off a constitution and a safeguarding policy. But other than that, like it has been very straightforward. But obviously, the easier it is, the more inviting it is to those people that are making the applications. So I think if you make it too difficult, there's a risk that it'll then be off put in or people won't want to do it. So I don't know if it'd be worth just open it up for feedback. So draft it, mm -hmm. get it drafted, and then maybe just try and ask for some feedback on it. It's not like a formal consultation. I think on this basis, it. though, it's not, it doesn't come across as being any more worrying than it. Yeah, yeah we just lay, lay it down. Yeah. Like I say, I obviously, I, I asked John because I know he's shown an interest yeah. and has emailed in a couple of times and said I'd quite like to make an application. Mm -hmm. So I asked for his feedback and it's actually been quite positive because obviously the, the comments I've just made are, is feedback that's come mm. from from that. So is it really the policy that you want feedback on or is it more the form that they'll be filling out to go with it? Yeah, that's yeah, the bit yeah. Of, so the process. Yeah, the process of the application. Like, is it user-friendly? Yeah. I just want so you to do that to go with this. Beneficial to know yeah. how user-friendly it is and, and I, I if there was anything we could do to improve that. Box. Do. Yeah, so it's making the forms a bit more user friendly. Action council. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one other thing that's kind of a minor thing that is historically inherited in this is that we got mention of checks in that again. Yeah, uh, can we get rid of that one together? Just cut monies or funds or something like that because that's how we do, you know. Mm. Received yeah. or like we do do checks and it's a real problem because we have no banks mm. so it means I'm or I having to travel to a bank to pay a check in so it's not really something to so no. encourage to no, the the we 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 no, no, at the moment we're going to Windham to yeah. Billings and that's closing down. Yeah, and HSBC and Windham is closing down as well. They, yeah, they, okay, good point. One of the things you could check with, I know it's a fairly slight issue, um, a lot of the banking apps now allow you to take a photo of the check. Not on our business form. No. <sighs> you can put checks in at the post office. Again, you have to have um, there's a reason why you can't with the business form. No. You can with personal checks. I don't know why. Mm. Okay, so we'll try and mm. drop those out as best we can then. Mm. I think yeah, that was it really. So I've done a small community where I've stopped to include in the thousands. And then I've done a large one. I'm just trying to look what else I've done in red. It's five. My, my first comment on, on that is do we need another limit? What you mean more than 5,000? Potentially, yeah. I mean, yeah. At the moment, I'll put 5,000 at the upper limit, but you can change that. That was a discussion. I was, I was going to say about the small grant and the large grant things. I know that traditionally we've been doing 250 or 500 pounds as a small grant. Mm. If you put a thousand there, you'll encourage everybody to put a thousand in. And I was actually going to suggest 
that we put the, the lower limit or the smaller one for up to 500 pounds. I don't want to talk. Um, just because I'm, you know, I'm always looking at budgets and things. And, you know, this, and I think one of the reasons why perhaps, um, you know, if we put a thousand pounds up to that, well, that's what people will be able yeah. to yeah. for. And that was still in our discretion as councillors to give less than that. Um, but, there is an element, I suppose there is an element that we only have a certain budget and if it's smaller then you can help more groups within that budget. Right. I kind of like that, so, yes. So, so, no, I'm just concerned, we've just been discussing the form that they fill in and that they have to justify their request for whatever amount of money they've got coming in. So that should be a net to stop people applying for more than they need. The other thing is, if, we, if they want to apply for a, a larger sum, should it be match funded? In other words, they, if they want a thousand pounds, they would put a thousand pounds up as well. It, it is, it's proven it's it's but I know that that's what we've done with town council do because I've had a chance to talk about it. Yeah. That it just they, stops people spuriously saying, oh, I'll have a thousand quid then. They, they have a smaller budget or a smaller living for their small grants, but anything above that has to be match funded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or do we say on the on the larger grants they've got to match them? It's it does complicate it. does, yeah. Well I put the reason I put five thousand pounds down as a as a start figure, to be honest, was because I think that's what ACA last asked us for. Mm. Um would yeah, groups well, like that be able to match funds? I don't know. I mean, oh, it, no idea. But then we've got things like the group out to be um, at care. I know they're a slightly different organisation altogether because they're an offshoot to the council historically. But they wouldn't be able to match. No. no. So it's a good it's a good principle. I know we'll be able to do this. Um, and perhaps we also have an element of an eye to that as well, see what they're putting into towards them. But it's going to be yeah. hard to implement in some cases. Unless we say something to the effect of lot larger grants will be subject to scrutiny as to other forms of funding as well. I think that's a fair question. The only thing I'm thinking is if the small grants was capped at 500 and then yeah. the large grant would then obviously be started at 500. I I don't know from my mind if I think that is a large grant. Like I don't know if that then fits the name of the site. Like like four, four digits. Yeah. yeah. Which is why I'm inclined to say a thousand pounds. But I as the as the cut off point because I think if it stops and if not, are you then going to have a void where say someone wants seven hundred pounds but they've got to apply for a thousand because they can't get the seven because it's it goes <laughs> yeah, through the cracks. And Perhaps that allows councillors to use a bit more discretion for council meeting. Um, there's no obligation for them to give all the funding that's requested. Mm -hmm. And I think in the time pass, it's very easy just to pass a motion and say, yes, we think that's a good cause. But if we a bit more discretionary on the how much we give to groups. Michelle, then that's exactly what I was going to say. So under our conditions or our application process, we could simply add a one line that says, you know, please be advised that you may be your your request may be granted, or we may grant you a percentage of your request, and then that just covers yeah. that. Yeah, I didn't say that. And I think as well, as though we do get some very good national clauses, I think in recent years the council has been more minded. I think to grant money to national charities and stuff when they've written in. I think previously there might have been more emphasis on the fact that it was local things, whereas I think some of the I know there is obviously national things that we love to support, like the British Legion and other things, but I think there is like the firefighters charity. I think they've written in a couple of times and we've paid their money, but that's not that's not local necessarily. I think they, they cover an area and out of them might see within, but it's not within the yeah. yeah, I mean, the other thing is, it's sort of demonstrated that it, even if it's a national charity, it's been yeah. locally within yeah. the town. Yeah. Yeah, like you say, the Wi Fi. Directly benefit the yeah. local residents. Yeah, not, not going yeah. for a pop that serves everybody. That would be a good, I think that would be a very good starting point. Mm -hmm. Because there's so many groups that you could help. Mm -hmm. 
and we do have a limited pot, it would be prudent for us to take that approach, I think. Mm -hmm. Because it is local taxpayers' money. Yes. Yeah. And then just a couple of questions on another couple of bits that we embed. So while I agree that any monies from the grant that remain unused must be returned within 21 days, I think that's good to have in there. And I do agree with the sentiment of it. Mm -hmm. But how is that being monitored or reviewed or checked? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, are you saying we gave you a grant, now we want the police mm -hmm. to prove that the money somewhere it is? And also, if there's five pounds, you know what want now. Like, it was just like a, yeah. If in, in, in a similar vein, I thought 21 days is perhaps a bit short. Yeah. It is very short. Are we, like, are we relying on their good faith? Yes. In that? Yeah. Which isn't going to happen. Or no. is it going to be something administratively that we say within two months we would like a copy of receipt yeah. of spend yeah. to be provided yeah. and then you've got to check that or like so what, this is what is it this is why all these bits are in red because they're all because really really it's a really good thing to have because mm -hmm. it is taxpayers money and if it's not being spent on what it's been asked for i think to I think, yeah. I, I, I agree with the sentiment, yeah. but I, I don't know that, how it would physically work. The condition actually in the small community uh, might be better suited. It says all awards must be properly accounted for, and evidence expenditure should be supplied as requested. Mm. So it's an option. That's the, yeah. If the town council is not satisfied with the arrangements, they reserve the right to request a refund of the monies awarded. And, and yeah. apply that to both. Apply that, to both. that is in there. So we're just mm -hmm. deleting that red line. Yeah. Well, my only concern is if you set too short a deadline, they're going to just think we've got to spend it. I suppose when I put that in, I was thinking along the lines of, I don't know, you. let's just say you ask for a thousand. Thousand pounds to buy something, then it's on sale, and it only costs you five hundred. Like, and then mm -hmm. they give the money back. But I completely agree; it's yeah. not easily feasible at all. Mm -hmm. And then the other one was the final paragraph on page three, which was that no member or associate of the grant receiving body should be negative about the town council publicly or via social media channels. Again. How would that be placed, and what would what would meet that criteria? What would be an associate of? Would it be if you're a committee member or a, a member of that group club organisation, or would it be? So think about the scouts, for instance, yeah. or the boxing club. They have children. Yeah. Would the parents be held accountable for that because they're affiliated to or associated with? Again, that's like yeah, it's, it's just, just it's very hard to decide, but it's just, very broad. You don't want to be giving money mm -hmm. to somebody mm -hmm. who's going to be publicly slating you, I yeah. suppose is yeah. kind of where that came from. But how you would it's discretion. how you would infer that this is why they're all in red because they're all just discussion. Yeah. Like, yeah. again, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing, yeah, I'm not just saying that. How would it be at least? I've seen that policy written pretty much in these words in several towns, um, once. Um, I don't know how it's going to be placed. Um, and is there a time scope? So, for instance, if someone applied for a grant today, and then two years later, yeah. and then two years later, say, I don't know, like yeah. a councillor was driving and cut them up, and they went, oh, this, and like, chip it, and then yeah, no, no, it's it. it. Would you then go, well, actually, this policy says that you've got to pay us back two years down the line? No, road. definitely not. Is, I think a time frame yeah. is important mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. something like this. And I think I think maybe true. member of member of the one would be more appropriate than all association because yeah. I think yeah. that's yeah. too broad. Yeah, that could be anything. Yeah, I think your associate is too far reaching. Um, and I think maybe we, yeah, we're, we're in, at the end of this uh, channels, you could say within a period of. And um, I think as well that. I think there should be some sort of buffer because obviously I don't have to word this. So it says they shouldn't be negative, but I think it should be like unjustly 
like it, or like I think there needs to be something because obviously as a council and as councillors, we are supposed to submit ourselves to scrutiny, we're supposed to welcome that kind of scrutiny and criticism. So then to say we're not at all is I think that kind of, I I think there needs to be a very spacious or I don't I don't know. But so I think there should be some sort of whole point of having that in rather than actually it being easy to please. It's more to just kind of remind people, look, if we're giving you this grant, guys, just be nice. I don't know, but would it ever really get to a point where you have a place that you would hope not? If you're helping I think that seems to be pretty extreme. Yeah. I mean, I also think that obviously there is the ability, which again, if it's part of the bulk conditions, it's part of the bulk conditions, but I think it should be unfairly. Like, I, I don't know, I think it just can't be, you can't be negative because people are negative about the town council. Yeah. Like, I, I think it needs to be something more specific. Maybe vexatious, but malicious, or Malic malicious, or vexatious. Because of when I, I'm thinking about this in relation to the ground, you saying about being part of our town council. That didn't even enter my head, but yeah. it could happen. So it's in it's in relation to what you're talking about, isn't it? Maybe that maybe I need to go so in, in, in a bit more. Yeah. If the council's got somebody up in the car, right? Isn't that safe? No, it's not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I think that I think it needs to be clear, more clearly defined. I think we, um, we've got to also state that we reserve the right to request rights, yeah. not without not that we will request it, we but we reserve the right. Yeah. right. And if it's about vexatious and we reserve the right, mm. then it gives us a scope we need, but it also gives a warning as well mm. that we want with them. Yeah. So. So, you said about the um, time scales. Mm. Surely the time scale is self limiting because that would be within the financial year that you give the grant, but you wouldn't do much about it the year after, would you? Right. I was saying a period of 12 months. And... Yeah. I think that would be 12 months. Yeah. yeah. So, you reasonable. Yeah. 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 Sorry, man. Make of course, you can, yeah. Um, just a nitpicking thing. And yes, I am. Uh, we're saying um, grants up to a thousand. And then grants from a thousand. You can't have a thousand in both ones. Oh, it's got to be a thousand. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I am. I am a bit. No, 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 you're right. You say over a thousand, up to a thousand pounds, and over a thousand. That's pounds. what I would say. But nine 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 is clearer, isn't it? Yeah. So it hits four digits and goes into the large. Does anyone have any other comments? We vote on that. I was at the exception of those amendments. So can we, we still leave it at a thousand for the nine 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 nine, yeah. In the small and then start with a thousand in the average. So yeah, happy to propose that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorted. Moving on. Oh, come on. Okay, next we have item eight, which is financial regulations. Um, I've put this in, obviously, just because there are some things that I could give a bit of assistance with. Just to try and do my job. Um, yeah, um, you're probably aware of the reasons it may very tight financial restrictions. Um, and I think we've got past all of that, and we've got very uh, robust financial measures in place now, law and processes, uh, and openness on these sort of things. So it's probably time for us to have a little look at this. Okay. Do we have any proposals? Is there any figures that you have in mind that would be yeah. so more valuable? I'm going to work. So, if you go to 4G, for example, it says, um, 
includes repair, replacement, or other work, whether or not there is any budget provision for the expenditure subject to a limit of five hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. I never spend anything that we haven't budgeted for really anyway. But there are. I wondered if we could make an exception for um, maintenance equipment. Because, for example, the top is broken, they need the topper, they can't do a job without the topper, replacing the topper is £1,800, I've got the money in the budget. If I bring that to full council, that's a month without a topper, is anyone really going to stop them having a topper? Can we make some sort of exception for, for budgeted or standard maintenance machinery that they need? Because that's the only thing that I ever need to go over well, without much notice on. I think re repair or replacement of existing equipment. That's an emergency to, repair and replacement. Yeah, so to maintain to something that's essential. Yeah, and I've obviously not buying three something bits new, trade. Well, in this case, for example, the top of they've said you're wasting your money repairing yeah, it. Yeah, so it's not, not something yeah. that we haven't already got. No, no. Um, but there are things like that that would be helpful. Um, also, the limit that I've got a month is £2,000. An accumulative total of two thousand pounds, which is an, under section twelve. We're doing so much now, and having and, and spending so much money at the moment that that's just gone. Yeah. yeah. I know things are very much more expensive than they used to be, and we're hitting entirely you know limits on stuff sort of far quicker than we would mm -hmm. normally. And looking at the procurement thresholds and processes, if we put the contract value of that part to £999, <laughs> and then from £1,000 to £9,999, that's at least this section here. Um, that would then give a bit more license on freedom of getting quotes in quicker and getting stuff done on stuff that would have been normally under 500 pounds but it's now well over 500 pounds mm -hmm. and the cumulative value of uh, well the petty cash on there is 400 pounds as well yeah, it's um it's even four or five thousand pounds i think mm -hmm. because if you're talking about a percentage of our overall budget the cumulative total of five thousand pounds would that cover your needs Michelle? Um, yeah, yeah, it would, but at the moment, it's not really, so I'm having to store things. Yeah, yeah, that would be four or five thousand. I can manage with four if you like, whatever you're more comfortable with. Five. Um, we can't tie your hands. You... Well, it's we end up losing money, but that's the thing that going on we see is that sometimes because we can't actually get on and do the job, we mm -hmm. lose opportunities to do things and we have mm -hmm. equipment hanging around that we can't move forward on. So 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 what are the what are the two suggestions? So firstly the, the two thousand and the items is cut to let's just say the say five thousand and then contract value under item twelve where it says under 500, yeah. it changes to 999 pounds, and where it says 500 pounds to 9,999 pounds, it says 1,000 to 999 pounds. Just make it easier with everything, with the inflation we constantly have. It just keeps fluidity of operations. So effectively, you can spend five. By, by cumulatively, yeah, by so. one thousand pound items a month, yeah, without, yeah. without. I mean, it's still subject to scrutiny, yeah. Anyway, and, then, and then it, it, it just kicks back to number four, item four, because then the, you know, for those because that's where you change the discretionary spend a little bit, it could be under item A there, or A, it says the council, sorry, the council for all items over. £999. So it's in line with um, item 12. And where we see things that are £500 within section 4, they could be changed to £999. So there's a clear divide on mm. where, where we need to do different things as a council, where the council has to be involved and where it's for the clerk to do. Delegated powers for them. Yeah. Okay. 
That's fine, sorry, there was one more point if that's all right. And then on 6 oh, Well, that, I think that would then change with that. Well, I was, I was going to say, can we not just take this out? So this basically says that the credit card can't be used without approval from council. I don't have to have approval from council to make a back payment. So we've only recently got a credit card, but the idea of the credit card is it enables us to go to places that we wouldn't be able to buy things from otherwise. So if you said to me, for example, right, we're going to authorise the clerk to spend £1,500 on X of things, do you really care whether I do it back to on the credit card? Do we no, need separate no. rules for a credit well, card? Well, to be honest, this is not a void now because we didn't have a credit card when we first put this in place. Now we do, and it's operational within the, the remit that we Also, we have. if you buy things online, you get some credit protection, don't you? You do. Yeah. So I think, think credit cards. I think we just remove that anyway. I, I, oh. I don't think it's. I don't it's think it really bears anymore. any purpose. No, um, it and it also says um, the credit card is restricted to the RFO. Well, actually, in reality, Anne and I share a lot of the purchasing, so it just just seems a bit of a pointless line, really. Well, we need some. Um, we need some fail safe to show you not be around. Yeah. Anyway, so back back to rules. So so so. The thing is, as well, these amendments have gone before the council. Yeah, so was, um, yeah. do you know what I mean? That was all of my Sorry. Did we have a proposal on something there? Yeah, I'm happy to propose that. Michelle Harris? You know this? It's nice to all of you in the middle of 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 uh, item nine that's charitable rates and fee waivers for venue hire. Um, so this isn't this isn't in the pack because we're not changing anything that we've already agreed. Um, we made a decision at some point to say things have to go to full council for decision and then we referred back to this committee because it's slowing things down. Um, so are you happy for the office to make a decision on whether something is charitable to cover this now? Yeah. I'm very happy for that amendment to come on there. Yeah, I, I think the reason that it actually, the reason it changed was to make sure that there was either some consistency and yeah. it wasn't there. So I think as long as as long as there is a principle that applies yeah. that is fair and equal and transparent, then I think that, that there's not an issue with it. But I think there needs to be something to start with to, yeah. if you are a charity. I mean, yeah, it's either it's free or can be free, but will be reduced at least to or something. So yes. that well, what we've done in the past, people is are trying to say rent and of this, and when we put it before council and there's been those proposals, the general rule of thumb is, and you might want to put some guidance together on this, is we don't mind the venue being used for free if the services offered are open to the community. Are a benefit to the community and are free of charge to the community. So it's mm. volunteers that are doing this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like the mental health after the COVID and things like this. So there's a real benefit to people. And then other charities, it was 50%. Yeah, which is what we did. But for some reason, when we redid it, I think we all agreed it was a good idea to do it this new way, but actually it's just in high down. Like it doesn't work. No, this is okay. I mean, with, with all these things you've been discussing, you, you've got to share some discretion to the department of the team. Okay, it's got best scrutiny there, ultimately. Yeah. And, and I think if you're not, if, if the, Michelle is not certain that the guidelines have been met or guidance has been met, then she's got to defer back to the council. There's not still that option available. Mm -hmm. I have a suggestion, sorry, Chair. No, that's OK, you're fair. Um, it would be useful for councillors to have admin, a report on who's hiring the account, uh, mm -hmm. it's a private document, and for what rates they're getting, if there's a discount mm -hmm. apply. So that we've got an opportunity to scrutinise that. Mm -hmm. And then it's not all on you. Mm -hmm. You can you can have the discretion to do these things, but at least annually councillors are reviewing this. Is that an, an idea that's worth moving forward, Shane? 
I, I think it, I think that's a very good suggestion. And the other thing I was going to say is, I think the criteria that you just suggested for it to obviously meet the network would be free. Obviously, that would have been picked up on recording. I think that that was a very good criteria. And if that criteria was met, if we were in agreement that that was a good criteria, mm. and if that criteria was met, it could be free and that Michelle could use her discretion to offer mm. the ball in if it met those criteria. I think that that would be transparent enough that, that there, is a, there is a criteria yeah. that you have to meet. But Michelle ultimately can go away and make those decisions. The, the vast majority of requests are any, any, any concern time anyway. No. It'll be absolutely clear. It's very straightforward in most of them. vast majority. Um, but yeah, I think I agree with Councillor Taylor what Councillor Leslie said about if it if it's free. I don't know if you want to use it. How yeah. it is it the yeah. proposal? If it's open to the community, if it's benefits the community. If it's free of charge and volunteer service given, then I think it qualifies to be given free of charge. And then Michelle can. And discretionary, um, the clerk, well, it's clerk's discretion. Yeah. Do we have a second, please? Mm -hmm. Perfect. And Michelle Harris. Items mm -hmm. for inclusion on the next agenda. I'm sure there's anything that's not so mine, not burning for me. No, so we'll probably be meeting in about three months' time. Be sometime in June. But I think at the moment you're trying to coordinate meetings so they're on the same night. So should we leave yeah. that to be yeah. confirmed? Yes. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. To be confirmed. 